neck to be a little bit sideways, a little bit uh, crooked? Um, no, they're, they're too independent. They're done by hand, even though it's done by an embossing machine for both. We, no, we no, learned that. The I am. My question is, they won't be exactly the same place. Okay, no. Would it be on the line? Would it be just on line? Pieces by piece, or would it be slanted? Already? It would be slanted. Was it slanted here? Uh, no, they're perfectly straight. So it looks different from what you would expect when something coming from the machine, right? Next, uh, in regards to the stem, uh, would you expect if it's something, Mr. Bob stated that it was just the gear that was sent to him, the attorney brought it right away. So if it's something that came straight from the machine and they put the bar seal, would you expect to see a very clear bar seal on that document? Uh, yes, you would. Do you see it here? No, it's a late and late image. You have to find light over by. I can show you what you have. Okay. Sorry about you. But it's hard to see. Oh, yeah. and, uh, um, uh, um, would you now? This is supposed to be a copy of a document created in 1961, which was created on a typewriter. On a typewriter, when you type letter by letter by letter, you don't see letters encroaching on the space. Yeah, so is that the question? Or question uh, uh, which is, uh, I think it's pretty, uh, what's the aberrations in the typewriter? Uh, the, the question is, would you expect? No, typewriters basically are either 12 characters to an inch and they all fit in a specific box. Six okay. points wide. What about this document? Did you see part of here? Uh, yes, we did. I have examples of it here, okay. but okay. can't show it. Yeah, so you have, you would not expect yeah. uh, There was a T and a Y that were recurring, a couple other letters. Okay, also. that's what we have to share. So you saw Curly here. Next, uh, um, the letter spacing was off too, and the line spacing too. Uh, what about uh, you can share the whole entire in terms of the um, uh, number? The number ends by uh, with 641. Uh, did you check uh, the numbers? Was that sequential? Uh, no, it was hard finding the law, but uh, both the, the uh, uh, there was a Model States Vital Statistics Act and the U.S. Department of Health and Education, as well as the the uh, Social Security system. That both say in, in the federal regs that um, all birth certificate numbers have to be sequential. And uh, they start from zero or one at January 1 at 12.01 a.m. And they have to be sequential. And in, fact, in, in fact, in the uh, Social Security system. Okay. So I just asked about the sequential. Yeah. Okay. I received a Bachelor of Arts from Laude from Long Island University with a master or with a major in criminal justice and minor in psychology. I attended Thomas M. Cooley Law School in Lansing, Michigan for a period of two years. I did not graduate. Subsequent to that, I was a police officer in the state of New York for 18 months. Subsequent to that, I was hired by the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service. Began my career at John F. Kennedy Airport in 1981 in June as an immigration inspector. I received on the job training and classroom instruction at Kennedy Airport. My instructor was the intelligence officer for the airport in 
we specialized in fraudulent documents and immigration fraud. I subsequently went into the enforcement branch of immigration two and a half years later and ultimately became a senior deportation officer where I remained in New York and to New Jersey, back to New York. So in 1985, I moved to Colorado and I retired for U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Department of Homeland Security, which was a successor agency that INS in August of 2008. I testify before federal grand juries and administrative law judges and deportation. So, I'm sorry. Uh, because we have so little time, I just want to move on. Uh, so you have extensive experience as a senior deportation officer. Um, you, uh, when, when is the first time we discussed the uh, Mr. Obama's records? November of 2009, after I retired, I formed my own consulting firm and have been employed, self-employed since January 2009. Is that the update that you provided? Yes, it is. And uh, is that an affidavit in regards to the social security number of Mr. Obama? It's the affidavit of the number that he is using. <laughs> uh, what, uh, if, uh, what did you find in, in your professional experience? What did you find in regards to the social security number? When I ran the social security number through Locate Plus, which is a commercial database that's used by private investigators and law enforcement personnel and attorneys. Uh, the only person who was associated and affiliated with 04268-4425 was Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. He gave me a list of his addresses, his driver's license information, other background information, possible relatives, et cetera. It also indicated that the Social Security number was issued in 1977 to a person residing in the state of Connecticut at the time that that number was assigned. Was uh, uh, Mr. Obama, did Mr. Obama ever reside in the state of Connecticut? Not to my knowledge, no. All the information and data that I have is specifically in that period of time he was residing with his maternal grandparents, uh, Stanley Robert Dunham and Madeline Payne Dunham, in Hawaii. Did you also review uh, the birth certificate, a birth certificate that Mr. Obama posted online? I've seen it and I have a copy of it, yes. Was there anything suspicious about this birth certificate? There are three issues of concern as far as I can tell. Um, number one, the serial number that's in the upper right hand corner, right corner is out of sequence and when compared to two other birth certificates <laughs> issued to two twins that were born the day after Mr. Obama was born. Uh, and these certificates were issued three days after his was supposedly issued. Uh, their serial numbers are lower, although you would expect them to be higher given the fact that they were subsequent to his. The second thing is that the certification paragraph that's contained in their birth certificates is somewhat different than the certification paragraph that is contained in the Obama birth certificate. And last but not least, uh, the name of the local registrar for the Obama birth certificate is different than the one on the Nordyke twins. And you would think that given the fact that they were born within 24 hours of each other, the local registrar would have been the same given the fact that they were born in the same medical facility in the same location. Mr. Samson, so what was your suspicion when, when you started the social security number and the birth certificate of Mr. Obama? Can you professional in my opinion, I believe that there's credible evidence to warrant further investigation in the issuance of court orders requesting unsealing of records in Hawaii, as well as the release of records from the Social Security Administration as to who the owner of 04268-4425 is. Uh, Mrs. Hansen, uh, did, uh, did you ever ask for the records of the Social Security Mr. Obama's stepfather, uh, those were made public. Did you study those immigration records? I have a copy of them and I have looked at them, yes. Uh, was there any reduction in those records? My understanding, reading the letter, the transmittal letter that was accompanying the document, the A file, what is called the alien file, and the A file, 
that was sent to Mr. Allen, but that they redacted a portion of some of the documents, I believe six of them were redacted, and there were seven pages that were withheld in their entirety, entirety due to Privacy Act concerns. Mr. Samson, uh, are there usually reductions in the records of deceased individuals? No. So, um, let's see, who could have been on the immigration records of Lolo Soratoro, who is not deceased today? Is Mr. Soratoro deceased? Mr. Soratoro is deceased, Ms. Donham is deceased, grandparents are deceased, Mr. Barack Obama Sr. is deceased, Maya Soratoro Wang was not born at the time, and therefore was not part of this at the time that Stanley Ann Dunham petitioned to have her spouse, Mr. Sobitoro, classified as an immediate relative to receive an immigrant visa. So what would be your conclusion? Who, who could have been listed as a The only person that I can come to mind would be Barack Hussein Obama the second, also known as Barry Sobotor. Now, next question, uh, uh, Mr. Thompson. In your opinion, as a deportation officer, if Mr. Barack Obama was a natural born your citizenship, he had a valid your citizenship, and he never lost his citizenship while living in Indonesia, would he need immigration records? Would he need to be no, there would be no need for him to be issued an immigrant visa if he's considered a U.S. citizen to be able to travel to the United States as a citizen. No, all the uh, information <coughs> that uh, you have in regards to Mr. Obama, uh, what uh, would be your conclusion and what do you believe that needs to be done or what we should do in cases similar to this with this kind of record? It would warrant further investigation. What I would do if I was still working with immigration is I would be getting the originals of the documents I just mentioned. I would go to the Social Security Administration and request a copy of the SS-5, which is the actual handwritten application for a Social Security number. I would also request the state of Hawaii submit a certified copy of any birth records so this way we could rule and rule out whether or not he was born in Hawaii. How about immigration and passport records? I would be going to the State Department Office of uh, Passport Services to see if there are any U.S. passports issued. And uh, uh, if those are not provided, uh, or the U.S. attorney doesn't provide those documents, what happens? Do you have to return them to the Department of Homeland Security or do you have to return them to the Department of Homeland Security? Well, first of all, let me clarify. Um, in the event we would be conducting an investigation, it would primarily be a criminal investigation to determine whether any charges should be filed. And the way the procedure works in the federal system is that you would do a report submitted to the United States Attorney's Criminal Division so that they could review it and determine whether or not they would accept it for prosecution. Assuming that they declined it, the alternative would be if there was evidence to suggest that the individual in question was not a citizen of the United States and in fact that falsely claimed to be a U.S. citizen, that person could be placed in deportation proceedings because falsely claiming to be a U.S. citizen is a separate and entirely standalone charge for deportation purposes. Would it be uh, sufficient for warrant for this person's right? Well, that would be how you would commence a removal proceeding. You would request a uh, administrative arrest warrant signed by the field office director. Uh, notice to appear in removal proceedings and the custody determination to determine whether or not the individual would be held in custody, released on their recognizance, or some other alternative to detention, such as uh, electronic anchor now or something like that. So, just to clarify, uh, for the court, uh, you're saying that there is no need to file the documents that you have I would be seeking a warrant of arrest and an issuance of a notice to appear on any individual who made a false claim to United States citizenship and who was not clearly a citizen or was clearly admitted for permanent residence. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Simpson. At this point, I would like to admit into evidence the affidavit of Mr. Simpson and the Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, that be ready to carry your closing yes. on. Yes, yes, Your Honor. I'm just going to get.
Mr. Samson's affidavit. 